Today, I'm going to be showing you how to get started using the Google Photo app and some of the really cool features that come built into it. Let's jump in. So we're going to start by just downloading the app here. It's available in your wherever you get your apps. In my case, I'm on the iPhone, so in the App Store. Now, I do already have it installed because I use this every day. Uh, so we're just going to open it up here. Now, when you first open up the app, it's going to ask you to sign into your Google account. If you already have a Google account, you can just sign into that account. In my case, I am already signed in, so it, it's taking me to my main page here. Now, I'll walk you through everything on the main page and how to navigate through there. But before we jump into that, I'm going to show you how to turn on the backup option for your phone. Now, this is where Google is really powerful because every photo that you take on your phone, you can have it automatically back up to Google Photo. So we're just going to go up to our profile picture here up in the top right hand corner and press that. And then you can see right across here, it says backup complete for me because I already have the backup set up. But if you don't have that set up, it'll say set up backup and we'll just click on that. And here is some options. So you have the toggle up at the top to turn the backup on or off if you want to change that. You have the account that you're backing it up to. And then below that, it shows your backup quality. Now, this is very key. Right now, I have it on storage saver. But if we want to change that, we're just going to go up to the gear icon in the top and click on that. And it shows you how much storage you have and how much everything is taking up. But we're just going to scroll down to the bottom here. And here it says backup quality. We click on that. And it gives you two options. There's storage saver and there's original quality. So the storage saver saves your files at a sort of a compressed or smaller file size and is totally free. You have unlimited storage under that method. The other option and I would say if you're just using Google for a backup, just to security purposes, making sure you have those photos and you don't lose them, it's plenty good enough. And I think that for me, that's how I use Google Photo. Any photos I really want to save, I transfer to a hard drive and I save them in a different method. But this is really just a backup because this is always running in the background of once you take a photo, it backs it up. So if something happens to your storage or you lose your phone or anything like that, those photos aren't only on your phone, but they're backed up on the cloud in Google storage. Now, the other option is original quality, which means that it will save the photos at the quality that you have it set on your phone. So when that backs up, now that does use storage. So you get so much included in your your free plan on Google, but you can always upgrade that and, and add more storage if you need to. So if you're looking to back up everything at the highest quality, then you want to select that original quality, but there is a fee that will be associated with that once you upload so much to that. But I'm just leaving mine on storage saver for now. So we're going to back out of that. And then you have a couple of other options. You can use your cellular data if you want to back up photos that way and cellular data to back up videos if you want to do that. So again, if you're out and about or you're on vacation and you want to turn that on because you're not in Wi-Fi as much, you could do that. For me, I'm in Wi-Fi 90% of my day so that I don't need to worry about that. So now that we have the backup set up, now we're going to go to the home page. Now, the way that this is set up is kind of cool. Across the top, once you start using it and you have a lot more stored in there, it's going to give you these sort of reels that pop up that that it assembles for you. And it'll do like some throwbacks of like this time last year or five years or 10 years, however long you've been using that. Or it'll even do themes of like summer time or family time, vacation, and it'll put these together, much like, you know, Facebook or Instagram, a lot of these do as well. So if you click on like similar shots, it gives you some other shots I've taken, like the ones that it's coming up in the folder, right? So, and then you can back out of that. So it kind of gives you those options across the top and you could save those or post them or however you want. And then below that is kind of the body of your photos. You can see these are photos that I took today and some videos and you can scroll through there and do what you want with those. And you can navigate however you want. So you have over here, you could go to comfortable, you could go to day, which compresses those. You could go to month, there's everything in September. You can kind of switch through things that way. And so you can scroll back through as far as you need to, to find a certain image or a certain shot that you want. And what's neat too is if you go in here and let's say I want to click on this and you see it's playing back the live view. So up at the top, you can pause that. So we just see the image. And now across the bottom in this individual photo, you have some options. You could share it. So you could select people in your contacts to share that to and it'll send it to, to them from your Google Drive or you can edit. So if you click on edit, 
Now you have all these editing tools. I won't go into great detail on this, but you have some filters you could put in there. You could crop the video. You have adjustments. I mean, just tons of stuff to really kind of dial in this photo however you want, exactly the way you want it. And then when you click Save, it'll ask you if you want to save as a copy so it doesn't interfere with the original one. And you can save that. And there you go. Now it has that saved for there. Now you can also click on Add. So you can click on albums and you can organize photos yourself into different albums however you want. You could have your, your family pictures or pictures of your mom and dad. You could have archive photos or whatever you want. You can create your folders however you want. And then you also have delete. You can click on that and you can delete it, but it will remain in your trash can for 30 days. So in case that you don't want to delete that right away or you decide you need to go back and, and change that, you can always do that. So we'll just hit delete, and now that photo's gone. So we back out of that. Now the other thing that you can do is you can tap and hold, and you can select multiple photos in there and do all the same things. Move a group of them to the albums, send a group of them, delete a group of them, do all of those things that way. Now up at the top, you can see there's a little plus sign there. If you hit that, now this is where you could create your own albums, highlight videos, cinematic photos. You can also upload videos from there if you have something that's not syncing. Like let's say we want to create a new album and we'll go home office. Now to add photos, there's a couple options. You could add those manually. So you just collect the select the select photos and then you can go through just like we were doing before and say add. And you can add those right in there. Let's undo that. The other option is you can have it auto add people or pets. So when I click on this, it comes through and auto detects faces that it sees pop up in your photos frequently. So this might be your, your spouse or your kids or family members or your pets, even detects dogs, cats, things like that, that it sees often. Every time it sees that face pop up in a photo, it'll auto add it to the album, which is really kind of handy. So you could just say, hey, I want pictures of my family, select all your kids, your spouse, and it'll automatically add that to the album. Now I do have these blurred out because these are real faces. These are faces of my family members and friends that are in here. Now, we'll just back out of that. And then down at the bottom, you also have create, where you can create your own collages, your own animated videos and things like that. So you can play with that a little bit. And then they also have a Gemini search option in there. So you could just ask it to search for certain things in regular voice so that it can find things that way. So once you have this all set up, you just let it run in the background and, and kind of forget about it. You can see I got photos from six years ago, from 12 years ago. I've been using this for quite a while and it backs up all my photos. And what's nice too is now I can sign into this account on my desktop or on my laptop or on my iPad and access all those photos from wherever I am, whenever I need them. I hope you found this video helpful and I'll see you in the next one.